Hello and welcome to the second episode of Getting Started with Houdini and in this video I'm just gonna go through pre-flight checks, uh, how to edit our interface, and how to configure it so that we are kind of set up to work faster in Houdini. Also we'll talk about some default uh, preferences, how to install side effects labs, Houdini engine and all that kind of cool stuff. And at the end of it we will also create this uh, procedural kind of DNA looking uh, triple helix setup and yeah render it out and let's see how it goes so let's start I'll delete everything so that you don't feel like you're losing something and of course I will reload current desktop so that we are on the same page so first things first let's go and go to our edit preferences general user interface uh, as you might have already seen from the youtube i'm actually recording in 4k so initially my global ui scale was at 1.5 right like kind of like this but it's too small for my eyesight so i increased it to two basically uh, your personal preference of course uh, just know that it scales pretty pretty well uh, despite any number you might put in so don't be afraid uh, to actually you know uh, play with the numbers and see what fits you uh, one little thing I want to say is that you will have to restart Houdini for the UI scale to apply next up the play bar UI mine is compact your probably is normal and it will take more space on the bottom but it it's not super useful to me personally because, um, whoops, uh, for example, if you go to the geometry and you, let's say, box, and let's say we animate the box, like uh, we hold Alt and left click, and we create a keyframe and go to the 96. Again, move it, I don't know, here, make a keyframe. And of course, as you can see, we have our super amazing animation. By the way, real-time toggle will actually toggle it real-time, so it plays 24 frames per second and not like super fast. The reason why I don't have it like this big, because there is also, first of all, animation editor, but that's not exactly the best way to access it, because if we hover here over our translation or whichever actually where wherever we have our keyframes and we hold down the shift middle mouse button we actually go into the animation editor so that is why i don't have the normal let's see preferences uh, oops preferences general user preferences uh, that's why i don't have the play bar on normal i have it in compact because i don't really need it okay next up uh, let's go to the miscellaneous and we'll see that OpenCL device, in my case it's set to I presume that you should also set it to GPU and indeed just check out if the correct GPU is set up because for example if you have uh, two GPUs you're like on a laptop that has a built-in some GPU and then discrete GPU obviously you will have to enable the discrete GPU so it kind of calculates faster and of course GPU will speed up uh, different calculations for example erosion on our terrain system all right next up um, I want to stop on the side effects labs and Houdini engine so as you see on the top we have the shelves and the shelf tools in my case is the side effects labs that I'm talking about if you have installed your Houdini from the launcher, uh, there is an option to actually install it and update it. And then you'll have to press the plus key, plus button, go to shelves, whoops, go to shelves and enable side effects labs here. But if you're like me and you, for example, run it from Houdini, um, I mean, I'm sorry, if you run it from Steam, you have the license Houdini Houdini Indie on Steam license and you go here there probably will not be all of these icons you'll go to the update tool set and it will actually say start launcher and you're like wait a minute which launcher I don't have the launcher right 
And uh, there is a solution, obviously, to this. All you got to do is you have to go to the github.com slash side effects. You will see that uh, there are two popular repositories, one of which is Houdini Engine for Unreal, that we will use as well, and the side effects labs. So I'll open both of those. To actually download them, you'll have to go to the releases and you'll see the release. And you just press here, download whichever it is that you want. And then going back, you'll have to read how to manually install it. it it's not like super hard. It's just you unzip it, you copy it, you do whatever this thing says. Same for side effects labs, of course. You go to releases, uh, you download the source code, you unzip it, then you read the installation for Steam Houdini users like this. Again, pretty straightforward, just a couple of steps and you'll be good to go. And that's it. Then you will restart Houdini and you will see the tool set and everything will be just like here. All right. so. Next thing, uh, if you have skipped the very first video, you'll see that I have a dark gray background. So how do you make that? You hover your cursor over the viewport and press the D key, or you go here and press on the I key, uh, I icon, I'm sorry. And it says like, uh, where is it? Open display options D. All right, so we go to the background and by default it's light, but uh, it's a bit too dark for a nocturnal creature that I am personally. Um, dark, as it says, is a little bit too dark. And the gray, uh, here we have the dark gray. However, you will have the lighter version to fix that. First of all, I'll say gray, save as default. OK. And in the preferences of the side effects labs, I will enable viewport alternative gray background. Click accept. Uh, if you are not uh, sure what OCI Oasis does, uh, do not enable just yet. We will talk about that when we will be rendering with Karma and exporting things into Unreal and yada, yada, yada. But for now, we don't really need this. So the only thing I personally prefer is the alternative gray background so that I can actually see better the smoke, the fire simulations, all that kind of stuff. So dark background fits me perfectly. If you think uh, it will fit you as well, so enable that as well. Uh, next up, I'll go to the stage. And the stage usually, despite the fact that oh, in the geometry context, in the uh, object, object context, we had the background set up to gray, usually stage uh, kind of ignores it and it still is in the light. So again, we are in the stage and display options Solaris. We go to background, say gray, and say save as default. All right, cool. Now we have everything in order. Finally, uh, let's start to talk about how we can tweak our interface. So as you might have already imagined, if you press this kind of collapse button, the things will start collapsing, uncollapsing, all that kind of stuff. Of course, uh, you might accidentally uh, click something, you're not sure where you are, what is this, where am I? The easiest way to reset everything will be reload current desktop. And the current desktop of mine is actually built. Now let's create our personal desktop for our personal needs. Uh, you will see in a second why we are doing this. Actually, uh, let me showcase why we are doing this in the first place. Again, we we'll switch to stage and this will be actually perfect. We say import all and then we have our dome lights. So they kind of have some lightning and let's say our trusty Linon. I kind of like this environment. It's relatively interesting. And finally, we drop the car karma node make the Karma XPU just so it kind of renders a little bit faster. And we start the Karma renderer itself. However, 
Uh, let me see. If we have something like polyextrude, individual elements, kind of like inset, we will see that it will not look very good. It's not look, looking faceted the way I personally want it. So we will have to fix the normals, right? But this jumping around constantly outside of stage, back into the object, go to the object, place normals, tweak the normals, go back to the Solaris, check out if it works. It works fine. So, okay, this takes too much time. In fact, I think we need to facet these normals a little bit more because they're not defined well. So how do we actually solve the problem of constantly having to jump inside, outside? And in this case, we're just jumping between Solaris and object context. However, you might be jumping through material editor or VOPS networks or simulations into objects and DOPS import, all that kind of stuff. So basically, if you are not sure what's going on for now, I think this is a good illustration. What we have to do is divide our view, um, workplace into more tabs. So we can have one tab dedicated to our stage and Solaris and the other to our object. So we can actually tweak real time and see the render results. How do we do, how do, we do that? Um, as you can see, there is this button that says maximize. By the way, you just can press, uh, press control B and it maximizes wherever your cursor, mouse cursor is. And the second um, button is this triangle dropdown and it says uh, split pane left, right and split pane top, bottom. Okay, so we go to the most right, top right, uh, drop down menu and say split pane left right all right we split right now once on the bottom we do the same thing split pane left right okay so as you can see we now have two sets of uh, network and parameters network and parameters so how do we actually make it so that Houdini understands that when we select node here, it should just change the parameters on top. And when we select node here, it should again, just change the corresponding top pane split and not both of them. As you can see right now, we're changing both of them. So how do we do that? As you can see, there is this pin uh, little icon. You can write hold down right mouse button and, and uh, release on one. Again here, release on one. As you can see, they're now connected. Here, right mouse button, hold down two. Right mouse button, hold down two. All right, now we're getting somewhere. As you can see, when I select here, the corresponding top pane changes and not the right pane here as well. Here, the selections change only corresponding tab part. Really useful. Finally, we can pin the viewport to our network view. For example, I will pin it to network view number two because the network view number two will be our Solaris network view. And the first one, we can actually use OBJ. So again, if I select something here, you will see that viewport is still in the Solaris, viewport in the Solaris mode. However, I can now go to the, in the object mode and start tweaking our normals. And as you can see, our viewport again is linked. Here's number two, number two, Number two, it is linked to our stage context right now. If we go to object, you will see that we drop outside of here or in materials or out or anywhere outside of actually Solaris. So we go here. Again, we are viewport is in the Solaris mode. However, 
this vertical part is in the object context. So we can tweak everything and indeed we can enable Karma itself and see our tweaks in the render running live. That's really, really useful. Again, poly bevel. Let's say we want to bevel a little, a little bit, kind of like this. All right, so there you go. We can tweak everything in our object context and not ruin the situation in our Solaris context. However, personally, I usually, sometimes, I, I'm not saying I, I prefer, I just sometimes switch between one and two because sometimes I just need to work only on my viewport because when you are working inside of geometry context, you can easily switch between visualization um, of wireframe, for example, here, whoops, not wrong, smooth shaded, smooth wire shaded. I'm, by the way, just hitting down Shift W to enable or disable wireframes. All right, finally, as promised, let's create our double or triple or quadruple helix, whichever you want. So we installed the side effects labs and side effects labs actually provide a lot of different useful setups and presets for working inside of Houdini, in game engines, or in any other applications, whatever you prefer. So how do we get there? Right click or tap, uh, labs, for example, geo, and let's say we want to use the labs spiral. By the way, there is uh, an node that says Helix. Uh, Helix is a roommate side effects lab spiral, but for the, uh, for the sake of actually telling you the usefulness of side effects labs, let's use the side effects spiral. Of course, there, whoops, there is a lot of things, like all of these things have their own use and utility. For example, for Unreal Engine, you can use the Groom export, Pivot Painter, all of this is kind of like uh, little algorithms that were built by the side effects team to make your life sort of easier. By the way, before side effects labs actually created the spiral, you had to make spiral on your own in Houdini. That was a little bit of annoyance. So as you can see, it's created like this. I did it the other way, but long story short, we now have this spiral. All right, so let's start actually creating our helix. First, I'll increase the height, obviously, because uh, height does what it says, right? It increases the height of this. Uh, next, I will make it a little bit more So it kind of revolves around itself a little bit more by using loops number uh, loops three, and of course um, you can change the scale in the z axis, in the y, um, in the x axis, or whichever. And finally, we can increase or decrease the number of helixes. In my case, I think we'll stay with helix count three. How do we make our geometry? I say tab wire and. My bad, it's actually polywire. So we decrease the wire radius to 0 0.02, for example. We'll tweak, we'll tweak this a little bit later, just see how it goes. Next up, what I want to do is divide. Now divide, what it usually what it does is that actually it converts the quads into triangles. However, another thing that it can actually do is not convert to triangles, but hexagons by enabling compute tool. As you can see, this gives a rather interesting result. What we can do now is convert these edges that our divide created into another polywire. 001. It's a little bit too much, but let's say 000. I know, three. Okay, this, this looks better. Um, I think, in my opinion, we have a little bit too many of those vertical divisions. So I'll go back to spiral, enable the points. You'll see that every point, let me make it a little bit bigger. Make it six. Okay, every point will be corresponding to a vertical division. So when we go to the polywire here, I will reduce the number of points 
and as you can see it starts to become a little less crowded so to speak all right so this looks already really good almost really good finally what i want to do i think is subdivide increase by two and as you can see we have our triple helix i think it looks really interesting okay so i will increase the height increase number of no not number of points maybe number of loops like six or maybe five again personal preferences doesn't really matter at this point you do what you want um, and that's pretty much it i think we can boost a little bit more the number of subdivisions so we have more definition in our render it looks more smooth and what i want to do uh, finally i think maybe increase the y radius no actually i liked it more 002 so i think that's almost it maybe increase number of points to 90 okay yeah this looks perfect for me personally of course um, finally what i'm gonna do is bend it so if we don't have this subdivide you'll see that our geometry is really really coarse it's not really well defined it's light so if i hold down the middle mouse button over here you will see that we only have twenty thousand polygons if i re-enable the subdivide we will have 1.25 million polygons so that's a lot of polygons however if we now bend the more polygons we have the more smooth the result will be so again i select bend as per usual i press enter you will see that we already have some sort of blue box that will help us however uh, that doesn't look good right so how do we fix that Control z we go to the set capture region so i left click here left mouse button another left mouse button and there you go okay this is much better nice so finally we can switch our viewport linked from our first column to our second column basically switching it to the Solaris context let's do that and as you can see yep we have our thing of course uh, finally what we can do I think is create a camera hold down control left mouse button it will create a camera move it here okay we are now looking through the camera it is locked to our viewport this is good and all we got to do is just you know place our render where we want it to be and if you don't like the background preview you can press the d key go to background and uncheck the display environment lights as backgrounds and this is what we have in fact i think we can just go to our background make it kind of black disable the view of grid and there you go this is our render this is how we um, tweaked our viewport i mean uh, tweaked our in interface final thing i almost forgot we need to actually save our viewport so how to do that we go press this drop down save current desktop as and I'll name it AAA, press save. So why did I name it AAA? Because so that I don't have to look for it. I will just, next time I run my Houdini, I'll just, if I need it, I'll switch to AAA. Basically, uh, usually when I start working, build works for me just fine because, let me see, I reload current desktop. Uh, build works just fine because um, when you are working on simple-ish geometry or just, you know, messing around in the viewport or in the, in the network view, you don't need uh, to have your network view split into two columns. However, when you, do need it, when you do need it, you just switch to this AAA. Actually, I'll make it one and resave it. 
save current desktop. Uh, you can delete your desktop. Obviously, you can go to desktop manager, set delete this, you don't need this. And of course, you can uh, def uh, definitely check out other different viewports. For example, the other one that is useful is Solaris because it is already have the scene graph tree pre-made for you and the scene graph details. Again, we can do this ourselves, but you know, it just saves a little bit of time when you are done with your geometry creation. You can just go switch to Solaris and work from there. Obviously, you can make it yourself. For example, you go to plus new tab, a new paint tab, go to Solaris, scene graph details. Obviously, it is all available here, but you know, for convenience, there are some pre made So again, this is built. This is our AAA. This is Solaris. This is how you do this. Anyway, um, hopefully this was not too boring for you because I understand that, you know, working with interface might not be the most mind blowing experience in your life. But I know for myself, when you start with a new application and you do not really know how to navigate, how to tweak your uh, viewport, how to basically fix your uh, interface, it becomes a nightmare because one wrong click and you are in creation nightmare. You don't know where to go, how to fix it, how to do things. So yeah, uh, hopefully this makes you more proficient inside of Houdini. Now you know how to fix pretty much any interface thing you want. And thanks for watching. Obviously we will do much more interesting stuff going forward. If you are interested in learning more, um, and using Houdini, you know, procedural workflows, how to speed up your creation process. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the, do the casual, you know, usual YouTube thing. And with that, I hope you are having a good day and see you next videos. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.